Hey, man. What's up? Have you ever heard of Six Toe Rodriguez? Rodriguez? <laughs> six Toe Rodriguez? <laughs> Rodriguez. I know. I was saying it wrong the way you did. <laughs> six Toe Rodriguez. Six Toe Rodriguez. Okay. Is Six Toe a name or is it like a nickname? It's like a name. Got six Toe. So, so is uh, it just, it's just Six Toe. So I watched two separate interviews with people asking him about his name. Um, and he said in one of them, he said, I don't know. My mom picked it. Um, <laughs> yeah, and the other one he said uh, it's because I'm the sixth kid. Oh, <laughs> all right. Neither of those were as ex- exciting as I thought. So, um, but he, I mean, he is the, uh, the uncle in Spy Kids, right? <laughs> is that is that who we're talking about? I think that means you're getting waterboarded, bro. And Jesus would have got his money this whole time. When did they build Australia? <laughs> nah, man, he's dead. Wait a minute, dad. <laughs> dad, come on. You're getting screwed here. <laughs> Everybody has a grossest thing about them. Things I learned last night. He say that because you Jill saw the picture, and he does look a lot like him. <laughs> He does. Look, I did see the picture on accident. He does. He does look a lot like the uncle from Spy All Kids. Right. I accidentally saw the picture, but no, he was not. He, he is not that actor, um, uh, nor is he an actor at all. Um, the six tail Rodriguez. Uh, here's here's something interesting. His his a uh, uh, what do you call this uh, Wikipedia page under his occupation. He is the only person on Wikipedia that has an occupation that includes demolition worker and excavation worker. Um, what? Th- no, you think no, he's the only person. Yeah, I think there's no no one else. You who think had a Wikipedia page? No, I, I don't know how you would confirm that. Look at every personal page on yeah, Wikipedia. Yeah, well then don't make definitive statements. I'm making a definitive like statement. He's the I'm only confident. person. No, because mine says that. Here's the thing. I was talking. Do to I have Tom. a Wikipedia page? No, you don't. <sighs> I was talking to Tony a second ago, and I was like, I was like, you know what? I just might be the first person who got waterboarded and is still on speaking terms with the person who waterboards them. Uh, and he was and like, he's like then he was you like, didn't get water. No, he straight up was like, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but so you talked to him about getting waterboarded then I did talk to him. We have someone in our building who is military. Yeah, we who can't knows, say his name. I said his name bleep it out <laughs> who knows how to waterboard. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> and I think that means you're getting waterboarded, bro. Anyways, so six toe uh, he's his occupation is a list. And so his list is singer, songwriter, guitarist, poet, excavation worker, demolition worker. Those are his occupations. Yeah. So he's the a uncle from Spy Kids. He's a jack of all trades. <laughs> okay. Uh, so um, here's the story. This is a crazy story. Um, so the guy uh, he lives in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, kind of came up in Detroit, Michigan. Is okay. from uh, originally from Mexico. His family moves uh, moved away, and then he moved to Detroit. Um, and while he was there, uh, he was a local musician uh, played the bar scene uh, wrote a lot of songs. This is this is a long time ago. This is in Detroit. Scene. Yeah, so this is in the uh, he's born in 42. So he's in Detroit in the 50s 60s. Okay, um, uh, and so he is a very young guy coming up in the bar scene writing songs playing shows and he gets yeah. discovered um, discovered. Who? Well, <laughs> I mean, some local who is looking for people. Who oh, I thought you were gonna like. <laughs> I thought you were gonna like straight up be like, well, you know, Walt Disney was just happened to be in Detroit, just, you know, <laughs> looking for his Epcot land, <laughs> and goes into a local bar because he had a drinking problem, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then just heard, what is this sweet music? What is this melody? And listen, because that man has six toes. <laughs> He plays barefoot. He plays barefoot. Like worship. So you leaders. can see his six. T- oh. <laughs> <laughs> I hate when worship leaders would leave barefoot. Like, I just feel closer to God. Why? Yeah. It, well, it's holy ground. Take off your shoes. Is that what they do it? Yeah, yeah. They're trying to be like the most. That makes sense, I guess. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it yeah. is, there's a justification for it. Do you remember when true. our college had to make a rule that you had to wear some kind of shoes in the cafeteria? <laughs> Because one person who I'm pretty sure listens to our podcast, yeah, he know, you know who you are, you know who you are, <laughs> would walk in and just into the cafeteria. He would just walk the whole campus barefoot. Yeah, he. I don't think he wore shoes for like two years. I don't think he did either. Yeah, which is, I mean, honestly, kudos to you. Like that's impressive. I'm impressed. Is it? 
<laughs> I like him a lot. Yeah, great guy. He's a really fun guy. Great guy. But that's the grossest <laughs> thing about him. And I love him. And I would everybody, say that everybody has a grossest thing about them. The grossest yeah. thing about you is what? I don't know. You have to tell me. That pimple on your nose. You. Yeah, I got a pretty big set on my nose today. Thanks for pointing it out. Appreciate yeah. that. The grossest thing about you is that you still have an iPhone 8. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I upgrade? It works. Does it? It works. It's paid off. Can you off. flip through the cameras real quick and it just works. show? It works. It's, it's paid off. If you're watching this, can you just guess which one is his? It works. It's paid off. Why would I upgrade? I'm, I'm going to edit in, this. I'm not giving in to Apple's schemes. I'm going to edit this. And I'm going to make your angle just Horrible. upside down. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, so, anyways, so he gets discovered um, by a guy who works um, for a pretty major record label. Okay. Um, and the guy's like, hey, we want to sign you. Yeah. Uh, it's called Sussex Records. It's out of business now, but it was an offshoot of Buddha Records, which was. Fairly large record label, um, some pretty pretty um, prominent artists. Prominent artists, none that I had heard of. Um, yeah. But I, according it's to pretty the internet, big, you know, pretty big. I mean, I never, I never heard of them. But yeah, I mean, it was sixty years ago. I think about this a lot too. To them, I was just looking at like, like TikTok today. I stumbled across an account mm-hmm. that had eight million followers. Yeah, and I was just like, I've never seen you before in my entire life. Well, here's here's what I realized. I was watching the other two yesterday, and Alessia <laughs> Cara came on, and I was like, I have no idea who this is. No idea. No idea. This is how I know I'm an old person now. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't think it's an old person. I'm saying there's so much. There are Twitch streamers yeah. who have millions of fans mm-hmm. and are making an insane amount of money. Yeah. And we don't know about them at all. Do you all. think? Here's an interesting question. Do you think that with the internet and really TikTok and Twitch and those kind of platforms? We're past the point of household names. No, I still think we have household names. Yeah, um, because I think there's a different level of celebrity. Yeah, I guess you know, I guess you can um, there will it. always be a Kim Kardashian. There will <laughs> always be I, I'm serious though. You I know, mean, I think you're right. There, there will, will always yeah, be a, even if I don't listen to Kanye. I know who Kanye is. That's fair. You know, that's fair. Um, there will always be that level Those of celebrity like super level superstars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think that it is shifting, <clears throat> but uh, what's interesting to me too is that you are able to create a pocket. Mm-hmm. You know, in a way that I don't think we've seen before. True. Where um, you could have a couple million like devoted fans. Yes. Yeah. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 And that was the fear of the internet was that it was going to create like this one world <laughs> thing Order. where it would just be like, here's this government and here's mm-hmm. these. These are your now international celebrities and this is it kind yeah. of thing. But what ended up happening was that it just created a bunch of you know fractions mm-hmm. of this person has eight million followers and makes a killer living doing this. Yeah, and I've ne- I and you know I'll, I'll I still will never see any of their content. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fair. That's you know? fair. That is fair. So that wasn't the case with uh, <laughs> with Sixto. He put out two records with this record label, uh, one in seventy and seventy one. Originally under the name Rod Space Regas, oh, which he hated. Uh, the label the made label that decision. That. Made that decision. Yeah, they're like, we don't like your name. <clears throat> yeah, and he was like, yeah, okay. And they let him switch it back to Rodriguez uh, after putting out a single that didn't do well. Um, and so then he put out an album, Cold Fact, in 1970, and then another album, Coming from Reality, in 1971. Do we um, know any of his songs? Yeah, which we can talk oh. about that. Um, well, mm, maybe. I mean, kind of. Uh, so uh, uh, they didn't sell well at all. Uh, okay. They didn't do good. Um, and so he was quickly dropped from the label um, and then he a bummer. he kept playing like local shows. Um, I will also say this about the internet is that there is more power in the artist's hands now because then he gets dropped from the label. What does he do? He just goes back to playing bar shows, right? Yeah, you just go you maybe try to get a local radio stations help. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. what do you you there's there is a gatekeeper you have to go through. That's if you're going to be on the radio, you got to get now. And honestly, what sucks now too, though, is that you could be so talented. Mm-hmm. You can have, you can build all the streams on social media and all that. Mm-hmm. But now, what a record label wants is for you to have a viral hit on TikTok. Yep. So yep. you can get a viral hit on TikTok, get a record deal. Yep. Or you can do this other way: get a bunch of streams, build a huge fan base, be touring already, but you don't have the viral TikTok. 
the record label won't touch it. You know, yeah, right, right, right. But you don't need the record label anymore, though. You're already touring. You're already doing the the stuff. (laughs) The record label only picks up people that they don't have to put the work into now. Yes, where before they would go out and actively search for people with talent. Same thing with the the talent agency that wants uh, you know Reagan to do commercials and once Mm, and they mm -hmm. were they were like, hey, can we sign Jaren too? But they won't talk to me. They haven't emailed me. They want to like and and they're just like they wouldn't add anything to what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's pretty fair. Um, like I'm already getting ads. <laughs> you listen to this episode right now. There's probably a pretty litter ad. Going <laughs> 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 I'm already getting commercials, baby. Cut to the ad break. We'll see if it hits. <laughs> <laughs> Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. That's right. That's when new episodes drop on Patreon. <laughs> Patreon's a way to get early access to episodes and other content and exclusive merchandise. And we're not going to stop there because we got a private Discord with our hosts and producers in it for less than 17 cents a day. That's right. That's five dollars a month. You too can be a Patreon supporter and not hear advertisements in this freaking podcast anymore. Text till into six six eight six six. Otherwise, I'll come to your house. I will find you. I will destroy everything that's good in your life until we're the only thing left. Anyway, here's another advertisement. Listen to that. <laughs> See, take that talent scout. Take that. <laughs> I don't need your celebrity. Uh, so I got magic spoon cereal. <laughs> so he goes back. So this so he gets cut pretty much right after the record came out in yeah, 71. His second like, record. No one bought this. Yeah, they're like people don't like you. Uh, <laughs> so he went to not out there. You have a lot of fans. It's yeah. just people don't like you um, here here at the record label. <laughs> There's a lot of people who don't. Uh, like so he, he kept playing music for about five years um, releasing singles on like small independent labels and stuff like that, but it didn't really go anywhere. Never really took off. So in 76 he kind of gave gave up on his music career um, and he bought a house in Detroit at a government auction for 50 bucks in a not great neighborhood, um, but $50 house did a little bit of work. $50. Yeah, yeah. Did a little bit of work to renovate it um, in what year? Uh, 76. That's still obscenely cheap. Obscenely cheap. That's not like an inflation number. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like a, this that was is, it would have cost him two hundred and twenty seven dollars today. That's the inflation. Amount. Yeah, that's the inflation amount. So that's so he still, bought it at a this was not a, cheap this is not a house. He well, bought a front porch. I mean it where it, a house used to be. <laughs> I, I mean the way Wikipedia describes it is a derelict Detroit house. So it's not in great shape. Okay, he did a lot of work to renovate it though, and then he he became a day laborer. Literally, his life after this was he would he was one of those guys who would go hang out um, at different stores around town and be like, "You need any work done?" Um, and then he would go do some demo work for you or pick up trash around your yard. Like yeah. he literally would just find people and say, "Hey, you, you need anything done?" Yeah. He didn't have a job. Like he was just a day laborer. Um, so very much lived in kind of poverty. Right. Well, um, in uh, the early 80s, something happened, and it's not really clear um, how it happened, but somehow uh, he went like viral in Australia. Uh, and so, okay, uh, like one of his songs just took off. Yeah, and people in Australia loved it. So, some local Australian record label found Buddha, the company that owned the company he released his records on, and they were and like, purchased the Australian rights to the record. Oh. And so they started selling the record in Australia and it went platinum um, in Australia, in Australia. That's honestly a dream of mine. <laughs> I was I really hope that our show is just insanely popular in Australia. <laughs> so they end up they end up tracking him down and in the early 80s. He does two tours in Australia like massive like theater tours sold out tours like big theater tours like making money. Yeah, tours. yeah big tours um, goes out and does those twice. Um, that's you know, that's what Owl City does really. Do you know Owl City still tours like in Asian countries? You know, it's really funny you said that. <laughs> There's a uh, a music commentator that I watched some of his videos. <laughs> He's already shaking his head. Did you show He's, me four he, of this guy's videos this week? He, anyway, he mentioned the other day in a video. He was like, he was like, he's like, here's the thing. He's like. <laughs> He's like, you find any of these bad artists from ten years ago? They are doing huge tours in Europe and yeah. Asia right now. Yep. And he was like, he's like, here's the thing, <laughs> and he's like, he's like, this isn't like a mean thing at all. And he's like, those countries just have lower standards for music. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. No. <laughs> He's like, he's like, here's the thing. He's like, they like anything. He's like, if it's, he's like, they're just like, oh yeah, we like that. That's cool. We'll go to the show. Yeah. Um, in the U.S., we're People just hate a little, everything. we're just a little stiff, you know. He's, and so he was more, he was more pointing the finger at us, being like, we're we're jerks, because uh, we're like, oh, it's all. I'm not listening to that anymore. I know. Well, and that's what. So that's what's crazy about Owl City is that he lives in in a small town in Minnesota, mm-hmm. the town I've been to like three times this year to do shows. Mm-hmm. He lives there. Yeah, in this smaller than Mount Vernon town. Yeah, yeah, and uh, tours those just these massive crazy tours. Interesting. That's it's crazy. bonkers. That's anyway, crazy. So six toe. So six toe goes in does these two in the massive 80s. tours in Australia. They knew and Australia was- existed in the eighties. <laughs> How long has Australia been there? <laughs> when did they build Australia? <laughs> So he does a couple tours. Yeah, starts getting some some royalties from it, but it's kind of like he's getting kind of robbed. Um, he makes the money from the tours, though. Yeah, he makes the money from the tours. He's getting some royalties from the record sales, but it's not what he should be. Getting. The split is he's getting robbed. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, the thing is, uh, he continues to live a very humble lifestyle. He goes back from Australia and he continues working as a day laborer. He's he like, stays I've got at his five hundred dollars. <laughs> That's ten houses. <laughs> Becomes a squatting <laughs> mogul, right? He's just buying all these government auction homes for fifty bucks. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, he he gives all the money away. He's like th- <laughs> the government's like this one's on fire right now. <laughs> fifty dollars. Fifty bucks. <laughs> so no, he just goes and he starts giving all his money to his friends and family uh, when he comes back from these tours, and then he just goes and goes back to to building stuff for random people. Okay. Um, and so I he does his Australia tours and then it just kind of goes quiet. So it's like 82. It was his last Australia tour and then it's like, yeah, he's done with music forever. Okay. Well, meanwhile, in the mid 70s, just about right after his record comes out, somebody in South Africa discovers him and same thing he's happens. Been gaining steam in South Africa. Something the same thing happens. He goes viral and in South Africa um, and it gets to the point where um, music like aficionados in South Africa say he was bigger than Elvis in South Africa, South Africa, um, like multi platinum, uh, and so selling all these records. Um, but there was he became almost this mythic figure. But who was who owned the rights to those things in South Africa? It was a similar scenario where someone bought the the local rights okay. to it from the previous record label, which we'll get to that in a second because that one's a little bit more fraudy. Um, okay. <laughs> um, but uh, he uh, uh, blows up, but it becomes like this mythic figure in South Africa. Sure. Uh, and so there's there's the legend. The legend goes that somebody in South Africa was dating a girl from the U.S. because uh, he was away on college or okay. uni, as they would say. Uh, and so he comes back from some time in the States and that girl he was dating had one of his records and so he brings it back home and that's how and it he started. loved it and then everybody started making copies. Eventually a local label found it got the rights and started printing it and distributing it and he just became massive in South Africa, but they knew um, well at least they heard that he wasn't playing shows anywhere anymore. Yeah, what year is this? Mid seventies, so okay. pretty much right after they came out, seventy eight. This is 79. before his Australia tour. Mm-hmm. Before okay. he blows up in, before he blows up in Australia. So some think sure it blew up in South Africa and they took it to Australia and that's why oh. it blew up in Australia. Okay, okay, okay. But that that train is hard to pinpoint. Sure. Um, but uh, <laughs> um, so he, they, there's becomes this like legend of well he's got to be dead because he doesn't play shows anymore. And so he's like this national icon, but they're convinced he's doesn't exist like he's not alive. Yeah, and so the storyline at least for South Africa um, was that he didn't get the recognition he deserved in the US and one night he was playing a show in Detroit uh, and there was all these technical issues. There's some sound problems. One of the guys in his band was missing some notes like it was just one thing after another not going right Um, and he was already really frustrated with how his records were performing. Uh, and finally, at some point in the night, um, the crowd just starts to boo because it was going so bad. And it's like a 50 person show. Like, there's not a lot of people there, but right. the crowd's booing him. Um, this is the legend. Yeah, this is yeah. the legend. 
And so then as the legend goes, six toe finished a song and he said, this is my last performance and he shoots himself on stage. Oh my god. That's what everybody what? in South Africa like honestly believed like that's what happened. They're like, six yeah, this Rodriguez. guy did that on stage. Yeah, yeah, and so that was the story like they just everybody just always believed that that's what happened except for our two reporters in like local reporters for some reason. We're just like, I don't think that's true. There's no way that's real. Yeah, they're like, there's no way and so they spent <laughs> 20 years trying to track this guy down and so they literally and they literally had nothing. They just had his songs like they had no info about him like he wasn't doing any large enough tours that they were hearing about it in South Africa. There was like no news they could find like they couldn't find anything about him. This is pre internet. Yeah, so all they had were the lyrics to his songs and so they were looking through the lyrics of the songs trying to track this guy down. They didn't even know he's from Detroit. Oh, um, I thought it was going to be like the li- luckily the lyrics of one of the songs was just bought me a $50 home in Detroit. <laughs> went on tour in Australia <laughs> brought another home in Detroit and they were like I bet he lives <laughs> in Detroit in Detroit. No, what what was confusing is he actually had a song. Um, he had a song <laughs> where he references. I think it was Florida and so they thought he lived in Florida for a long okay. time. He had another song where he referenced the tallest building in the States. Um, so they thought maybe he lived in New York for a little bit, um, yeah, but, but the uh, tallest building in the States is the Dave and Busters <laughs> down the road <laughs> <It's> in Kansas, <laughs> <laughs> right? It's huge. Have you seen it before? The giant Dave and Busters. A big Dave and Busters. <laughs> <laughs> like what is that? The Empire State Building? Mm. No. That's, ah, Dave, and that's Dave and Busters. <laughs> if that, so if that was the biggest <laughs> building in the United States, that's hilarious. We should do that. <laughs> The world's largest Dave and Buster's, also the lo- tar- tallest tower in the world. Tallest tower <laughs> in the world? <laughs> Dave and Buster's. It's the Dave and Buster's. <laughs> Man, if we were rich. Golly, that'd be so funny. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. Anyways, so. Uh, <laughs> now, why guys- did you just build it so tall? Uh, power. It's really about <laughs> it's the power really, for us. It's really about the fact that it's yeah, just really it's, funny. I mean, that Dave I and mean, Buster's. <laughs> say it out loud. Say the tallest <laughs> building in the world is a Dave and Buster's. <laughs> Say that sentence out loud to yourself and don't giggle. Yeah. How about that? It's, it's, oh, you why. giggled. That's why we did it. That's objectively hilarious. <laughs> all right, and I know that you maybe you know don't have the same sense of humor or whatever, but I think we can all agree that that's funny. Oh my gosh, that's so good. So uh, these guys spend twenty Tracking years trying so to. So they're into down. the nineties. They yeah, didn't hear the about the, the Australia tours. Mm-mm, they didn't hear okay. about the Australia tours. Uh, and so they spent all these years looking for him, trying to track this guy down. Eventually, one of the guys, um, one of these reporters, ends up finding his old manager and calls his manager. And the manager is like, "Yeah, I know, I, don't, I know Rodriguez." Oh, I thought he was gonna be like, "I don't remember him at all." <laughs> <laughs> well, we have like two records with him, whatever. Yeah, and so he's he's asking him all these questions about his music, about his influence, about like where he lived, oh, all this stuff. Oh, well, six toe, yeah, yeah. And then he says, "Hey, how did he die?" And he was like. Oh, he's not oh, he, dead. <laughs> and the guy was like, what? And he's like, he's like, no, he's alive. He's like, want me to give him your number? And he was like, yeah, yes. And so later that night, middle of the night, this guy wakes up to a phone call, Six answers the phone or no, the, reporter. the reporter reporter wakes up the phone call, answers the phone middle of the night and he, he's, he's like, like, hello. Hey. And he hears on the other side of the phone. Six toe say hello. And he recognizes the voice because he's listened to it so much and he was like six toe and he was like, yeah, He's like, he's like, I hear you like my music. <laughs> and so he had this long conversation with him and basically was like, you are a household name in South Africa and six toe like thinks it's a joke. He's yeah, it's got to be a joke. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, finally, this guy convinces six toe that it's true and says, just come out to South Africa. Like we'll fly you out here um, just so you can like meet the people. Yeah, Maybe play a show or something. So, so they plan a six in 1998. They fly him out there. They plan a six stop tour around South Africa, stopping in some of the biggest cities in South Africa. And this is an arena tour and every stop is sold out. Um, 30, 40,000 people um, coming out to see him and there's videos of him coming onto the stage and it is literal minutes, five, six, seven minutes of applause before he can start playing um, because he is literally a legend. How Bonkers would that be? <laughs> Literally, the day before he came out, he's picking up trash in Detroit for like thirty bucks, and then he goes and does an arena tour. 
in South Africa. <laughs> how much money did he make from those? I don't know exactly Enough? how much bonkers <laughs> a bonkers amount of money. Sure. Have you heard of Tillin podcast merch? That's right. We have a merch store full of Tillin bread and teas, hoodies, mugs, and so much more. We also make new designs for every single episode, but those are only available for a limited time. So get them while they're hot. Text Tillin to six six eight six six to get your Tillin merch today. So he he does this tour and what's crazy is like he has a security detail with yeah. him at all times. He is staying in presidential suites at hotels. His family came with him. Um, he has a couple daughters uh, and uh, his his daughter said like he's always been just a super like humble guy, um, which well, yeah, he lives in a fifty dollar house. <laughs> well, here's the thing like he he, he goes to these hotels <laughs> and he's like actually is there a motel six we could stay at? <laughs> Do y'all have those here? Uh, so he like, like and honestly, I think this is we'll, a little we'll like change it to motel six toe if you want. <laughs> so he he goes and he's in the presidential suites king bed, but his daughter said he was sleeping on the couch in the suite because he didn't want a maid to have to make the bed after oh him. My goodness. like this is the kind of guy he is and he literally all the profits he made from this tour. He gave away to friends and family like literally just didn't keep any of it. He's like, okay. Yeah, and uh, uh, then does this arena tour look at me in the eyes. If this happened to me <laughs> where I'm doing theaters and arenas. Yeah, I'm going to sleep in the bed <laughs> <laughs> and you're not getting you're a dime. not getting any of it. <laughs> All right, that's fair. That's so fair. the arena tour happens. He so does the arena tour goes back to Detroit to his $50 house and just goes back to day labor and went on literally to this day every few years takes a trip back to South Africa. They fly him out private jet like presidential suite arena tour and then just flies back to Detroit. No back way to his little day labor life. Uh, he's done that tour. I think they said it's like eight times now Is it new songs. <clears throat> he has put out a couple new albums since that happened, so he's making royalties. Well, he is now. He is now. Oh, so that's important. So the uh, uh, South African company, yeah, um, they <laughs> bought the rights, the local rights from his original record label, and then they did some very strange uh, legal jujitsu uh, that is not clear. It's hard, okay, to find exactly what happened here. But basically, what they did is uh, the legend was that he died. And so they played off that legend and they said, well, he's dead. He's so there's dead. a benefactor that all oh. his royalties have to go to. So benefactor was a made up person that ironically they named Jesus um, <laughs> and this Jesus Rodriguez. <laughs> there is this person Jesus who got all of his royalties from South Africa. And so he actually hasn't gotten any of that and initially At all, ever ever initially he didn't care like initially he he was like he's like no, I'm happy with my life. Like that's literally what he would say. And then eventually it was kind of like actually in twenty in 2018 uh, things changed and he's like he's been convinced to start pursuing this and so he he has kids. Yeah, yeah. I mean his kids are adults now. Yeah, but I'm saying like he probably has grandkids. He's got adult children (laughs) who go. Wait a minute dad (laughs) dad. Come on. You're getting screwed here. (laughs) Yeah, probably honestly. Yeah, when they're like five, they don't understand. You know, but when you're on a, like, if my dad is is his business is getting hosed over, I'd be like, "Hey, hold on, go, yeah, go get that, yeah, go get your bag, go man. get that bread." <laughs> and so now he's he's actually going after it. Well, in 2012, a documentary was produced about this, okay, um, called "Searching for Sugar Man." Very good documentary. <laughs> um, Sugar Man is one of his songs. I was gonna say, do we know some of the songs? Um, so Sugar Man was actually sampled in a Lil Nas song. Um, which was before the documentary, so it's interesting that he found it. Um, but it, other, what was the little Nas song? Uh, let me look it up. Um, <coughs> when was the documentary? 2012. Little Nas has not been doing. Little Nas, not was, Lil Nas, Nas. Oh, okay. That's what Sorry, I, was, I, I said, said Lil Nas. You did Nas, Nas, which is confusing. I, that shouldn't be allowed. Yeah, Lil Nas <laughs> is smaller, so a Nas song. Yeah, a Nas song. He was sampled at a Nas song. I can't find where that was, where that's at. Um, there was a rapper that came to our youth group who was. He went by Nas. It was, I think it was NASA. Is what his name? NASA. Was. His name was NASA. I think his name was NASA. NASA. 
Um, 2001 it was when the song came out. Yeah, it was when Nas's song. Okay, you're the man. Uh, so he sampled a line from Sugar Man, which is uh, popular. Rodriguez's song, right? Yeah. So, um, and after that, after the record came out, he kind of got a cult following everywhere, um, and because of uh, that movie was super successful and the everybody loved the story, yeah. um, and people went and started listening to his music, and so um, a lot of people listen to him now, and he does like festivals. Um, so he'll he'll do occasional tours in the states. Uh, he's gone back to Australia, South Africa, Europe, um, but he still <laughs> works as a day laborer. So he goes and does these arena tours. These massive festivals just goes back to his fifty dollar house in Detroit. Still lives there and does day labor. Imagine <coughs> that you're just going to like Home Depot, yeah, right, and then Drake. <laughs> it's like, hey man, do you need hey, to pull some. Do you meat? need like uh, you got any work that he's done today? <laughs> and you're just like, you're Drake. Yeah, I'll, I'll pull all the weeds in your house for like twenty five bucks. Twenty dollars, man. Whatever. <laughs> and you're like. You just said twenty five. You're <laughs> undercutting yourself. He's like fifteen. You know, like he's just really bad at negotiating. And so he's like, uh, you know, and you're like, That's okay. Pretty much what's happening here. Like this guy is, um, I mean, huge. Like in the states, he ended up after, um, after everything blew up, he ended up going gold on his first album. Oh my gosh. Um, and platinum on on the second. So like massive. Probably he's yeah, massive artist. Um almost didn't know it like very close to never <laughs> knowing any of this. If those reporters hadn't tracked him down, if they didn't find him. literally never would have known <clears throat> never would have known and they wouldn't have known he's alive. <laughs> they would have thought that that legend was true the whole time and Jesus would have got his money this whole time. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> isn't that that's, crazy. That's bonkers. Yeah, but that documentary is very good. You should watch it. What, what's nuts is just like how content he is like he's so content with his life like he's like yeah, I go do these tours every once in a while, but like I like my life. Like yeah. I, don't, it, he, I think he actually says that in the documentary something along the lines of like, oh no, he said he said real life is better. That's what he says. Oh, he said real life is better. Oh, I hate that. Um, that. That hit me to my core. Yeah, that like hurt me on the inside <laughs> a second there. <laughs> and so uh, literally like up until recently. Yeah, he has given his royalties away. He's given his tour money away yeah. recently something switched. I don't know if like he fell into hard times needs the money or what, but yeah. something switched and now he's trying to get that money. I'll back. never be that humble. <laughs> <laughs> but his music's actually really good. Like, I just you want you to get your hopes up. I don't want you to be like, I'm holding You know, the reason I haven't upgraded my phone is because Jaron's going to give me a new one. No, I'm not. <laughs> All right. I don't want you to hold out hope. <laughs> I don't want you to think. I don't want you to keep living in that crappy house you live in thinking that Jared's going to buy you a new one one day. All right, you got to <laughs> develop your own life, uh, but I, I, he's on. He's on Spotify. Uh, all of his records are on Spotify. They're actually under sick pretty toe? good under Rodriguez. It's just Rodriguez. Okay, he has almost a million monthly listeners. Uh, Sugar man is his biggest song is 49 million on Spotify. Okay, um, so like uh, really good Sugar man crucify your mind. Those two are very good. I listen to both those. I like them a lot. Um, definitely like old school like rock and roll. We should go style. to South Africa. Oh, oh, that reminds me. I'm so, so glad you brought this up. Elon Musk was raised on Rodriguez. Here's another thing. Dave Matthews band was influenced by Rodriguez. Okay, so Dave Matthews bands from South Africa. Mm -hmm. I didn't mm -hmm. know that. Yeah, and they, they were influenced by Rodriguez. Like he's a legitimate influence in wow. their sound and so uh, have they played together. No, I don't think so. They should. We should set that up. <laughs> you know, Hey, we've done an episode about both of you. Uh, Dave Matthews. Don't listen to the one we did about you. It's not very flattering. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> yeah, six. So we're gonna get you your own bus. Don't worry about it. All right, so <laughs> we're gonna get you your own <laughs> spot. Oh, we should gosh, petition Chicago to rename that bridge the Dave Matthews bridge. By the way, <laughs> I don't know why we didn't make that joke earlier, but we should. Um, mm. They I, I do know mm. that Dave Matthews covered Sugar Man on tour. I don't know if he's played if they play oh, with him or not. I would though. imagine they would try to unless Dave Matthews still thinks he's dead. <laughs> In which nah, case man, he's dead <laughs> <laughs> like no. He, hey, he who he was influenced by Oh, your Rodriguez. You know this, mu this musician who uh, pretty crazy story and stuff, but he's he's I mean he's been dead for a long time. And they're like you mean that guy that guy. <laughs> he's like that's not Rodriguez. That's Rodriguez. Yeah, 
play it. The guy mowing the lawn over here <laughs> is Rodriguez. <laughs> He's just mowing the yard. The guy shoveling up all your violinist poop. <laughs> the bus driver. <laughs> the bus driver. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> yeah, the only reason that happened is because we got a day laborer as a bus driver. <laughs> Didn't even have a CDL, man. But man, could he play guitar? <laughs> hey, he's pretty talented. That's crazy. That's Rodriguez, man. You know what Six else he can Rodriguez. play? It's a fiddle. Mm, there you go. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching Things I Learned Last Night. If you like this video, we have others you can watch, or we have highlights some of our favorite moments from shows. Please make sure to like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any future episodes, and leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next week on Things I Learned Last Night. <laughs>